Hello everybody and welcome to the Alakine Defense Masterclass. In this video, I am going to be giving you a complete opening guide to play the Alakine Defense. If you already don't know what that is, that is pawn to e4 by white and we will respond with knight to f6. But before we actually get into any of the theory, I just want to say that this took a super long time to make from having to study so many variations and then put it all into, you know, a nice neat list. It took a ton of work and a ton of time, but it will be all worth it if you would just like and subscribe. Uh, yeah, so if you want to do that, that will make it all worth it. Uh, also, this is being launched with a study on Lee Chess, so if you'd like to, um, uh, study it yourself or you know go along the video or whatever you can also do that I'm planning to keep this video around the one hour mark, but it'll probably vary up or down So anyways, let's get started First off I'm going to be going through all the variations not actually analyzing them Yet I'm just going to be you know showing you the first moves and then I'll be taking a look at all the mainline variations and then all the sideline variations, even the very bad ones and the ones that are virtually unknown, because this is an ultimate opening master class. So, the outcome defense starts with pawn d4, and we respond with the move knight to f6. This is the alakine position. This attacks our e pawn, and the alakine defense is something uh, known as a hyper modern opening which means instead of building a big center with uh, moves like pawn to c5, pawn to d5, pawn to e5, all these uh, moves taking a lot of space in the center with pawns, we are instead going to be developing our pieces and trying to make white take a big center, at which point we will be solely attacking it with our pieces. So with this move, we're attacking their e4 pawn, and the main line here is to push it to e5. But before I get into that, I also want to give you the other little variations. They can also play pawn to d3. Uh, it's a solid response, however it is uh, slightly passive, as now white's light square bishop is blocked out, uh, but still super solid for them. Um, this is now a dead even position, the evaluation is literally 0-0, zero, zero, and uh, black does pretty well here. We win 50% of games compared to white's 46. Another move that they can play here is knight to c3, defending their e-pawn while also developing a piece, and if they play this, then we will respawn with the move pawn to d5. This is known as the Scandinavian variation, uh, it is very good for us. Uh, technically, white can have plus 0.2 advantage after pawn to e5, but does that really answer, or does that really matter? The answer is no, it doesn't really matter. And we win 49% of games here compared to white's 45%. And the only line that you have to be pretty careful about and know what to do against is pawn to e5, we drop our knight back, and now pawn to e6. This is known as the Spielman Gambit, and it is very strong. Essentially what it is doing is forcing us to take the pawn, and at which point we would then have a very weak structure even though we are up a pawn. But let's not get into the theory yet. The other move that they can play here is Bishop to C4. This is known as the Krajic Variation and it probably looks like a gambit at first glance, but it actually isn't, because after we take the pawn, now white here has the move bishop takes on f7. And with this move, we are going to have to recapture it, and then white will have some shenanigans with queen to h4 check, and they will eventually end up winning our knight back with a fork. And also, if they do not play that, if instead they play some other move like, I don't know, pawn to, oh, sorry, pawn to d3 or queen to f3, we can simply drop our knight back and then play pawn to d5, and it is a terrible position for them. Uh, another thing they can do here, or another few things, is uh, knight to f3. This is terrible. Very, very bad gambit because we can just take the pawn. And yeah, I guess they have a knight, 
but there really just isn't any compensation for the uh, pawn they sacrifice here. Uh, they can also play pawn to d4, known as the Omega Gambit. Uh, once again, we can just take their pawn, it's absolutely terrible. This one doesn't even develop a piece, and yeah, just very, very bad for them. And the last thing that they can do to, uh, or in this position, the last thing they can do is play pawn to c4. This is known as the, I think it was the Omega Achilles Gambit. And, uh, yeah, it's once again, sacrificing a pawn, there's no compensation for it. This move doesn't even make that sense. Yeah, it's just not very good. So now let's look at the main line, which is pawn to e5 here. Attacking our knight, and the only good square that we can move it to is to d5, you know, central, keeping it in the center. What am I saying? Yeah, very good. And the main move for them is to play pawn to d4. Just getting even more space in the center as well as defending their e pawn, which may or may not be overextended here. Another move that they can play here is pawn to c4, attacking our knight, and this will most likely transpose into the main line. Uh, also, main line I should actually show you first is after pawn to d4, we will attack their e pawn with pawn to d6, at which point white here will play pawn to c4, attacking our knight. We'll drop it back to b6, at which point this is the branching point of the uh, Alakine defense. They have three options here, which is to play knight to f6, or I'm sorry, knight to f3, uh, pawn to f4, the four pawns attack, or taking our pawn, the exchange variation. But before we uh, look at those, first, uh, like I said, pawn to c4 is the uh, two pawns attack and after we move our knight back most likely this will transpose back into that main line with pawn the d4 and now pawn the d6 and we're in the uh, exact same position as before but there are some other things that they can do here they can also try to play pawn to c5 this is known as the lasker attack and this is a bit of a crazy variation White is grabbing so much space, or just taking all the space and kicking our knight around. This is the definition of a hypermodern opening. And both sides must be careful here. White has recreated a giant outpost square on this uh, d5 for a knight here. And now that both of these pawns are over here, no pawns can actually end up kicking this knight out. However, we must also be very careful here, since White's plan is to play knight to c3, bishop to c4, and actually end up sacrificing the c-pawn for a ton of developments and making us have a, a, or making them have a gigantic space advantage and try to choke us to death. Another thing that they can try here is a bishop, or sorry, pawn to b3. This is known as the uh, Steiner variation. Yeah, it's just not very good because now we can simply attack the center immediately with pawn to d6 and a bishop on uh, b2 here to defend this pawn just is not really necessary and you're taking two moves to develop this bishop rather than one which is just not very good. The thing that they can uh, try here is back in this position they can also play knight to c3. This is known as the Samish attack, and this is a great sideline for uh, white. Essentially, their plan here is after we capture them, they're going to take back with their d pawn, play queen to e2, uh, develop their bishops and knights aggressively, and eventually go for a long castle position and you know really try to get up in our space. Another thing that they can try here is pawn to b3, very similar to the Steiner uh, variation, that's uh, called the Welling variation this time, and once again this bishop here to defend this pawn is just really not uh, necessary. Uh, other things that they can try after pawn to d4 and pawn to d6 
is knight to f3. This is the modern variation where white is defending their center with a knight and this is one of the best ways to play against the Alakine defense. If they play this, then we will be playing pawn to g6, the Albert variation. And essentially what we're going to do here is play bishop to g7 uh, and start just trying to mow down their e and d pawns that are arguably overextended. Another thing they can try here is bishop to c4. This is known as the Ballo variation, and it's not the best thing that they can do since it blocks out this pawn to c4 push, which is very good in these alakine positions. But what they're going to do is try to play very aggressively with moves like uh, queen to h4 and queen to f3. But we are going to be able to neutralize these frets pretty easily if you know what to do. More things they can try after pawn to c4, knight back to b6. Uh, like I said, there are three things that they can do here. The first one is to take us. This is known as the exchange variation. It's, um, well, I was about to say it's bad, but it's not really that bad since it is, you know, still has a lot of advantage for white, but it makes us have very easy developments. You can take back with either pawns, I prefer to take back with a C pawn, at which point you have here and here, and the, while it is one of the best variations for white, it makes us have a very easy position to play. They're not really trying to blow us off the board in five moves or anything like that. Another thing that they can try here is um, knight to f3. This is not the modern defense, which uh, if you don't remember is knight to f3 here, but it is very similar and it's essentially a deferred modern defense. Uh, but it has all the same play. Once again, we're going to be playing pawn to g6, and yeah, it's an extremely similar position, and if you learn the modern defense, you don't really need to learn anything new about this one. The other thing that they can play here is pawn to f4. Uh, but before I get into this, there's actually one more variation that I almost forgot about, and it's pawn to c5, the hunt variation. To, if they really want to attack our knight that bad. Luckily, it's absolutely terrible because uh, we can just capture and then trade queens and yeah, this is very very bad for them But uh, like I was going on the last thing they can do here is to play pawn to f4 This is known as the four pawns attack where white is just you know taking so much space in the center here and This or the exchange variation is the best thing that they can do but once again, we are going to be trying to chip at their center with pawn to g6, bishop to g7. Uh, if they ever move their knight out, then we can pin it. Uh, yeah. And one of the things that we can try here is pawn to g5. This is known as, I think it was the Cambridge Gambit. And essentially what it's doing is gambiting this g pawn to try and mess up a white center here. And while we'll get into this at a later point when I go into all the variations here. Uh, wait, let me just make sure I didn't mess anything up. Yeah, I'm all good. Alright. Essentially what this move uh, does is yeah, try to break open white's uh, pawns, try to get them all disoriented and stuff. And if white ever actually ends up capturing, all their advantage is completely gone. It's all the advantage is gone for them, which is obviously very bad. Uh, but yeah, that is all the variations, and now I will start to get into each and every single variation. So first off, pawn to c4. This, if I'm honest, is not really a real variation, uh, because, uh, I'm gonna say, because it's really just going to transpose into some other variation. Uh, comes after pawn to e4, knight to f6, and they play pawn to e5, knight to d5, and pawn to c4, attacking our knight. Now, nine times out of ten, this is going to uh, go back to the main line position, which is once again here. 
the only other thing that they can really do here is play pawn to c5. This is known as the Lasker variation, and I will get on or I'll get onto this uh, a little later, as it is a very good sideline for White to try and play. But yeah, this isn't really a real variation. But uh, anyways, first real variation. Uh, we'll be looking at the exchange variation, which is pawn e4, knight to f6, pawn to e5, knight to d5, all this mainline stuff, pawn to d6, tack in their center, pawn to c4, knight to b6, and now they take on d6. Now, this move trades off white's uh, overextended e pawn, and we can recapture with either pawns. Uh, I personally recommend to take back with the C pawn, as now we have this uh, same setup that we're going to be using in a lot of variations, so it's a lot easier to learn. But the problem with the exchange variation for white, in my opinion, is that it gives us very easy development. Like, we can basically play bishop here, knight to six, mostly with our eyes closed. It's not too hard for us to uh, play this position. Yeah, after we capture, they will now play knight to c3. Many moves are playable here. This is just the most common and the best one, but you'll likely face a lot of other moves. However, they will uh, most likely transpose into the exact same lines. Now here, we'll play pawn to g6. They will uh, play bishop to e3. Bishop really belongs on e3 in these positions as this d4 pawn it needs to be protected. Uh, a good thing to keep in your mind is that if white ever loses this d pawn, chances are they're going to lose the game, and probably pretty fast, since this d pawn is the thing that keeps their position together. So here we will play bishop to g7, targeting uh, that d pawn, preparing to play, you know, knight to c6, and they play rook to c1. And the point of this move is to, first of all, have this knight uh, defended, and then play pawn to b3. And just try and uh, make a little pawn chain here, and make our knight on b6 as useless as possible. We will simply castle here, uh, so our position is you know, safe, we're probably not going to get blown off the board here. Now they play pawn to b3. Once again, now that our knight is... Uh, you know, just staring at uh, you know a pawn that's defend. There's not too much reason for a knight to be here now. So we will respond by breaking open in the center with pawn to e5. Yeah, breaking open in the center and trying to get rid of their d pawn, which is pretty much forced. Uh, most likely they will play, uh, uh, or they will take our pawn. They might also try pawn to d5, but this is actually bad because now we can take a ton of space with pawn to f5. And yeah, we just have a ton of space here. And yeah, so just this is pretty good for us. So white has lost all their advantage and this is now even position. But their best move that they will most likely play is to take, at which point we will take back with our pawn offering a queen trade. They will most likely take us, at which point we will take back, and after they play pawn to c5, attacking our knight, we have a very important move here, which is to um, not bring the knight to the center, but back to d7. You might be looking at this, well, why not to the center? Isn't that just a good move and start trading off pieces, right? This is a blunder, a very common one, because now white has a move, rook to d1. They pin us to our rook, and we're actually just going to end up losing this knight, since after bishop to e6 to attempt to protect, now they have bishop to c4. And yeah, we simply don't have enough defenders on this knight. They have too much attackers, so after something like knight to c6, they will simply uh, win our knight, and yeah, we're just down a knight here for nothing. This is terrible for us. So that's why we have to bring our knight back to d7, 
which might look awkward, but it's actually good for us because, remember, our knight was bad on that square anyways. So they'll most likely develop here normally with bishop to c4. And now here we will play knight to c6. Just developing and we will move this knight um, soon. They here will play knight to f3. Once again, normal developing moves. And now we play this move pawn to h6. The reason we play this move is that we don't want to allow them to reroute this knight to the d4 square. Or, sorry, e4 square. We don't want to allow them to get this reroute in, so we will play pawn to h6 and just prevent that entire idea forever. Here, they will probably play castles, at which point we have another very important move, moving our knight to f8. The reason for this is that we are now going to develop our bishop to e6, and if they ever capture us, then we're going to be able to recapture with our knight. And it's very good on this um, e6 square. So an um, example position could look something like rook f2 d1, attacking a rook, and we can simply develop it, or sorry, defend it by developing our bishop with bishop to e6. So now the rooks see each other. Um, if they ever capture us, then we can just take back for knight, and that probably isn't very good for them. And yeah, this is just an even position, and black does very well here. So that is pretty much all you need to know for the exchange variation. Uh, obviously, they can play a lot of other different things, however, this, this is the most critical line, and everything else they can do pretty much branches off of this as the main line. So now let's look at the or one of the other moves they can play in this mainline position, pawn to e5, pawn to d4, pawn to c4. Another move they can try here is pawn to f4. The four pawns attack, just taking as much space as possible. And while it may look like we are they are taking so much space, we have to be very careful here. It is actually uh, them who has to be very careful here. Because uh, once again, if they ever lose this d-pawn, their entire position crumbles into pieces. And I do want to say, I am not going to recommend this move pawn to g5, the Cambridge Gambit. I will analyze it later and show you why I don't recommend it, but yeah, I just want to say for now, I don't recommend it. Uh, yeah, so in this position, now we will take them. Uh, they're going to take back with their f-pawn, because take back their e-pawn, and you know, we can trade queens, that just isn't great for them. So after they take back, now we will simply play knight to c6. This move attacks their center, and uh, they can't push their pawn up, because then they would lose their e-pawn. So they have to defend it. Uh, their only move here to keep any advantage is bishop to e3. Only good move. The move knight to f3, which is, I think it's the uh, most common move here actually, loses all of their advantage. The reason loses all their advantage is the move bishop to g4. This pins their knight, I'm oh, sorry, pins their knight to their queen, and we are threatening some stuff to take it and then be able to take this d pawn. Now here, they only have one move, which is bishop to e3, defending this pawn. They can also try uh, bishop to e2. Uh, yeah, essentially what they're doing this move is that if we take them, then they're actually going to take back their bishop. Gambiting the c-pawn to have a lot of development and uh, play with queen to a4 and I would recommend just not get into any of this, just don't deal with it. Instead, uh, if they play um, bishop to e2, to simply play pawn to e6. And now this goes, or this is very, very good for us. And I have in my notes here, 80% uh, of games here go either castles or bishop to e3. Which, believe it or not, both of those are losing moves. 
The reason they're losing is first, I will start off with the better half, bishop to e3. Here, now we will take on f3, they will take back, and now we take on c4. And you might be wondering, what is the difference? The difference here is that now we are attacking this bishop, which uh, before we weren't. They could play this move queen to a4 immediately, but um, now they can't really do that. So what they're most likely going to do here is drop their bishop back to f2, at which point we should try to get rapid development. And the by far best way to do that, and the only move that is any good, is to play bishop to b4. This move checks their king and immediately gets ready to castle so we can consolidate, be up a pawn, and they have pretty much no compensation for it. And uh, let me look here real quick. Yeah, by far the most common move out of uh, 790 games, 682 of them, so something like, I don't know, 85% of games, go knight to c3, which is actually just a blunder. The reason it is a blunder is that now we can take on b2, attacking their queen, and there's really just not much that they can do here. Their um, most popular move here and their best move is to now play queen to c2, but now we win with knight to a4, the only move that doesn't lose, because now we are pinning them, we have two attackers here, and yeah, they simply cannot defend this knight. Their best try is to take on a4, and after we take on c3, and win the rook, they might try to take on c6 with their bishop. Okay, so after they take, now we can simply uh, just take back for our pawn, and after they uh, take it with their queen, now we can't block with our queen because then we just lose a rook, but we can actually just run with our king. And after they take our bishop, we are simply up three points of material here, and the game will go something like, uh, oh sorry here, we are actually just key this king on f8 for what it looks like. And, you know, maybe something like here and here. Yeah, we're just up material here and completely winning. So back here, the other thing they can try other than bishop to e3 is castles, which is a blunder because now we have bishop takes on f3, bishop takes on f3, and now we take on d4. And the difference here is that they lose their d pawn, but uh, yeah, they lose their d pawn instead of their c pawn, and it also comes with check, which means we're most likely going to win both these pawns. So something like queen takes on d4, knight takes on d4, uh, threatening uh, this, which traps rook. So bishop takes on b7, rook to b8. Uh, they will step their bishop back to e4 to defend this. But now we simply take on c4. And we're up one pawn here, but we will um, almost always also end up winning this uh, e pawn since if uh, bishop f4, then now here. Yeah, so we're also going to win the e5 pawn, which means we'll have a two pawn advantage and just be completely winning here. So, uh, yeah, where was I? So after uh, this move. That's why they can't really try to play bishop to e2, which is, I think, the secondary main line. They have to play bishop to e3 here. At which point, I recommend pawn to e6. This is very solid, at which point there are only two moves that are actually really played here, which is knight to c3 and bishop to e2, and both of them are pretty bad. The first one, knight to c3, isn't as bad. If they play this, then we will simply play bishop to e7, bishop to e2, something like uh, bishop takes on f3. Uh, yeah, they can't uh, take with the bishop because then they lose the c pawn and they don't really get as much play as they would have in the other line. So, yeah, after g takes, now uh, this is you go, bishop to h4, their king has to run to f1. And now we simply castle here. And this is just a very good position. Equal according to the engine. 
but uh, what do you want white in this position? Do you really want a king on f8? No, you don't. So, uh, yeah, back here. The other move that they can play here, which is actually the most popular, is bishop to e2. At which point, he will take it, they will take back, and now we just take on c4. And once again, we're getting this tempo on their bishop, so they can't play that uh, queen to a4 move they would normally play. Alright, so that is why they have to play uh, in this position bishop to e3 instead of knight to f3, since then bishop to g4, and they have to deal with all those shenanigans, which is just very bad. Instead, after bishop to e3, here we will now simply play bishop to f5. Just developing our bishop, at which point they will play knight to c3. Uh, they can also play knight to f3 in this position, at which point now we play uh, knight to b4. Trying to get into here, they will play uh, knight to a3 to defend it, at which point after pawn to e6, bishop e2, bishop e7, and castles castles this is just a decent position about equal uh, their knight is kind of awkward on the square and the engine says we can eventually play pawn to a6 and just you know make sure their knight is forever in purgatory here uh but yeah another their uh yes yeah, sorry the main line they can play here is knight to c3 which point we'll play bishop to or sorry pawn to e6 they will play knight to f3 and here, bishop to e7. Once again, just developing normally. They will play bishop to e2. We will castle. They will castle. And now, the move pawn to f6. This is the very important pawn break in this position, chipping away at their big center. So they will most likely take it. Uh, if they don't, then we will end up taking them. So they will take it. We take back with our bishop. Now it's uh, targeting this uh, pawn here. Something like a queen to d2, connect the rooks, uh, queen to e7, rook to d1, and rook to d8. And this is slightly better for white according to the engine, but it's about equal. So now let's look at the modern variation. The modern variation uh, is pawn to e4, knight to f6. Pawn to e5, once again this main line, however instead of pawn to c4 here, knight to f3. This is one of white's best responses. They are developing a knight to the center, as well as preparing a castle shortly afterwards, and we will be playing pawn to g6. This is the Albert variation, and we'll be playing bishop to uh, g7 here, and start aiming at their pawns. They will play bishop to c4 here, and this is the only move that actually scores well for white. All other moves are very, very good for us. And this might not look great because it blocks out their c4 pawn push, but in this uh, modern defense setup, they're planning to never play that c4 pawn push. So we will back up to b3 with our knight and attack their bishop. They will back up, and now we simply develop with bishop to g7. They will almost always castle here. Uh, there is one tricky line that I fell for in a game yesterday and I added because it was terrible. If they play knight to g5, you do not want to castle here because then they get to play pawn to e6 and it's just not great. Instead, simply play pawn to e6 and if they try to get really aggressive with um, queen to f3, then now queen to e7. Something like uh, knight to e4 to try and free up this square for their bishop, and now pawn to h6, just prevent that, and um, something like takes takes, and this is a pretty much even position, slightly better for them, but once again, the advantage is just not really there. Yes, that's that little tricky line, uh, knight g5, trying to go for some fried liver action, but uh, here, they will almost always castle, we will castle back, and uh, if they play, or sorry, the move we don't want to play here is uh, bishop to g4. Keep in mind, do not play this move, because uh, now they have this 
bishop takes on f7, king takes on f7, and knight to g5. Don't fall for this tactic, because now they win a pawn, we can't castle, and yeah, this is just very, very bad for us. So remember here, just castle, be safe. And now they will most likely play pawn to h3, just uh, preventing bishop to g4 uh, to uh, you know keep these pawns strong in the center. And um, they can also play many other things, so a good rule of thumb is that if they don't play pawn to h3 to prevent that, then you will play bishop to a g4. So after pawn to h3, we will take them, they will take back with their knight, and uh, Real quick, they can't really take their pawn since now we can trade queens and now play this move pawn to e6. And this just isn't that good for them. And we have a very clear plan here. We're going to play bishop d7, pawn to a5 to attempt to trap this bishop. And after they stop it, put our bishop on c6. And it's just going to be a monster on this diagonal. And then, you know, knight over here. And this is just very, very good for us. Like the engine is saying, the only move that retains any sliver of advantage for them is knight to e1, which I've, I mean, yeah. So they will take back their knight, at which point, and now we play this move, knight to d7. Might look a little awkward, but it's very, very good. They will play knight back to f3, since uh, otherwise we're going to take them, and then, yeah, it's just not too good for them. And now we have a very important move here, pawn to c5. This uh, attempts to get rid of their last pawn in the center, at which point uh, we will be able to, you know, something like recapture. And yeah, then our hyper modern setup, um, you know, paid off because all their pawns are gone and it's about an equal position. So they will most likely defend this pawn with c3, keeping their pawns in the center. So something like c takes on d4, c takes on d4, and now, uh, or real quick, if they try to take back their knight, then now we get our knight to c5, which just isn't very good for them, because after pawn to this, or sorry, bishop to c2, now we have pawn to e5, kicking their knight out of the center, and despite all those pawns being there in the beginning, we are the only one pawn in the center now. Hooray for hypermodern openings! Yay! Uh, but yeah, they simply can't really take back the knight because that's just not too good for them. Uh, yeah, so they'll most likely take back their pawn to prevent knight to c5. Which point? Knight to f6. We go the other way. And something like knight to c3. And now we put our other knight in the middle. Uh, because white here has an isolated queen pawn. Uh, you can go look at if that's good or bad for white, it's extremely complicated. But one thing I do know is that when there is an isolated pawn, you want to have a piece in front of it. And that's what we're doing here, we're establishing a piece in front of it. So something like, uh, now rook to e1, and now we have this very important move, pawn to b6. We are going to develop our bishop to b7, and ensure that we will always have a piece here via um, or via overprotection. So something like bishop to g5, now bishop to b7, knight to e5, and now simply rook to c8, and yeah, this is just an even position. Technically, uh, plus a 0 point three for y, but it doesn't really matter at all. Yeah, so that is how to play against the uh, modern setup on the g6, the Albert variation. Now let's look at the uh, most, or yeah, sorry, the most popular thing that you'll face that is still mainline and is not that uh, pawn to e5 mainline. After pawn to e4, knight to f6, the second most popular move here is to actually just play knight to c3 and defend like this. At which point, I heavily recommend here pawn to d5. This is known as the Scandinavian uh, variation because it's very similar to the Scandinavian defense, which if you don't know what that is, that is pawn e4 and pawn to d5. Yeah, so in this position, uh, you can also play pawn to e4, at which point you'll be in a Vienna game. 
However, I recommend to play this in an Alakine setup with pawns of d5. So after this move, they have two main options. The first one is to take us and uh, you know trade down, and the other one is to play pawn to e5. First off, I will look at if they trade. If they take us, then we'll take back with our knights. And uh, trading knights here is not the best plan. It is most is or sorry, it's white's most popular move by far, but it is pretty bad since after we take back, now our queen is just in the middle here and it's just a menace. They have no way to kick it out since this knight to c3 move that they usually have is just completely gone. So an example, uh, sorry, I can't even talk right now. An example position could look something like knight to f3, bishop to g4, threatening to trade down and make them have to take back their g pawn and have a horrible pawn structure. So bishop to e2 to protect, knight to c6, and long castle. And you know, technically it's even according to the, according to the engine, but this scores very, 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 very well for us. And yeah, this position. Very easy moves, we'll play probably uh, pawn to e5, well, I really just could not talk right now. Pawn to e5, uh, maybe push it all the way up to e4, yeah, it's just very good for us. But if they don't trade all the way down, the which is uh, better for them, they have a few other moves that they can play. The first one is to play bishop to c4, at which point I recommend to just defend the knight in the center with pawn to e6, so something like uh, now knight to f3. Excuse me, bishop to e7, castles, castles, and yeah, this is just an even position. They can also try to play knight to f3 here, at which point we'll play knight to c6, bishop to c4, and here we actually have a very fun move with a trap attached, bishop to e6, actually the top engine move. And it looks very awkward, like why would he block out our e pawn? However, the thing is, we're pretty much always going to end up moving this bishop away. So they have to capture us, because if they just castle here, then they actually lose a piece with knight takes on c3, and we attack their queen, and open up to attack their bishop at the same time. So after they take, now we'll simply take their bishop, and yeah, we're just up a piece here and completely winning. So instead of that, they're probably going to trade, uh, trade again, at which point, once again, we get this very nice queen in the center. So something like castles and long castles now. And once again, this is just a very uh, good position for us. You know, pawn to e5 is always what you're going to play in the next move. And yeah, very good. And the last thing they can try to do is pawn to d4. If they do this, then simply knight to c6, bishop to g4, after bishop to e2, pawn to e6 castles and bishop to e7 and yeah on the next move we're probably gonna castle as well move our queen up and yeah just very good for us so that's what to do if they end up capturing us however the other line that is arguably a little better is to play pawn to e5 attacking our knight at which point we are going to drop our knight back to d7 this attacks our e-pawn so if they see that now they can take our e-pawn, or sorry, they can take our d-pawn, then we will just take their pawn, and yes, yeah, it's pretty much just even, we just traded pawns here. Here, they're almost always going to play, if they don't take here, then pawn to d4. At which point, we're going to steer this into a kind of French setup, but not really. There is one other thing they can try here, which is, pawn to e6. Uh, I'm going to get into this on a later chapter in this video, but essentially white is um, sacrificing a pawn here to make us have a terrible pawn structure and open up this, which is a very strong gambit for them, but also super, super rare. So after pawn to e4, you can play pawn to e6 in a sort of, uh, now pawn to c5, and you've transposed into a French defense, actually. I think it's a Steinitz variation. But uh, essentially, after pawn to d4, we're going to play pawn to c5. And a white here, I think that something like 50% of the time, falls into the trap. 
They're almost always going to end up taking our D-pawn, since white here sees that we can now not take this. But here, now we will take on D5, and almost always, or actually, let me look at the uh, moves here for a second. Yeah, yeah, 5,000 people here out of only 6,000 or so games have taken the pawn, which is a blunder. The reason it is a blunder is now the move knight to b6. We attack this knight with both of our pieces, and they cannot take us because it has pinned their queen, and they're going to end up losing the knight. Now, they do have a few things they can try here to uh, soften the blow. The most resilient thing that they can do here is to first play bishop to b5 check. We will play knight to c6 as the, <coughs> oh, <excuse me. coughs> it's the only move they can we can um oh my god what am i saying it's the only move they can that we can i cannot talk right now oh my god it's the only move that we can play here since we can't uh block for bishop or um, knight here since then we would disrupt the pin so knight to c6 the only good move at which point they will play pawn to c4 trying to defend their knight but we will attack it with pawn to e6. Attacking their knight. At which point they might try bishop to g5. A very, very tricky move. Now we cannot actually capture this, since if we do, then knight to c7, king up to e7, and queen to d6 is actually checkmate, so you have to be pretty careful here. Instead, the only move that doesn't lose is queen to d7, at which point we are still winning here. Because uh, this retains a pin, as well as uh, stops uh, this pin in our knight here, which could be useful in the future. Now, what they're almost always going to play here is triple castle, or triple castle, long castle, at which point we'll take their knight. And after they take back, it doesn't seem that great for us, because yes, we are up a knight, however, they get two center pawns for it. However, I am going to show you how we can still absolutely win here. First of all, we are going to take their queen, they will take our queen, we will take back, they will take our knights, at which point here, we are only up a pawn, but we can get a ton of development and make them have a terrible position, and most of the time we are going to win with a very nice tactic. So bishop to c5 here, uh, developing uh, our bishop out, and as well as skewering this uh, f2 pawn. They're almost always going to defend it with uh, bishop to, or sorry, rook to d2, defending it like this. At which point, now we have the move rook to c8, um, getting something uh, against their king. So probably something like a uh, bishop to uh, e3. If they don't defend, then we would have a pin with a discovered check. Very good. So here they're almost always going to run back to b1. At which point we win here with a very pretty sequence. Bishop to f5, checking their king, they have to run back to b8, at which point here you should see that their king is so close to getting a back rank checkmate, and we win with a brilliant move, bishop to e3, a super nice move to win immediately. And the thing is, or the reason this move works is that we are threatening this back rank checkmate, so if they take it, then yes, yeah, this is just checkmate. So they have to uh, probably move their knight out to defend the back rank checkmate like this, at which point we will simply take their rook after they take back, and now we take one of their center pawns, and now we're up four points of material here and completely winning. And it's a little side note, if they end up moving their rook back to protect, then now we take their bishop. But yeah, after this sequence, we're up four points material and completely winning. And you're almost always going to get that trap that comes super, super often. And if they don't end up falling for the trap, then simply uh, pawn to e6, and we're now in a French defense, which is, as you know, probably one of the most reputable, or reputable, 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 I'm not even gonna say the word, you, you know what I'm trying to say. It's one of the best things they can play against pawn to e4. Pawn e4. Yeah. So, anyways, those are all the uh, mainline things. Now let's start getting into the sidelines. So, first one up is the sameish attack. Uh, real quick, wait, let me just check something real quick. Okay. 
first one up is the same mesh attack. So this happens after pawn to e4, knight to f6, pawn to e5, knight to d5, and now they play knight to c3. This is one of the best sidelines for white, and their plan is to, after we take, play, um, or start developing really aggressively, <laughs> not that, that would, that would be a funny move, into f3, play queen to e2, and eventually long castle, and try to choke us with their space advantage. If they do this, then we will take them, and after they take back, now here, uh, we will take, or sorry, we will play pawn to d6. Once again, just attacking their center. They can also try taking back their b pawn, however, this pawn to d4 push just isn't that great for them. If they do this, then we will play pawn to g6, they will rush in the center with pawn to d4, and we play pawn to d6. So here, they have a few options that they can play. The first one is to take us. If they do this, then we will take back. They will play knight to f3, bishop to uh, g7 now. Bishop to d3, castles, castles, knight to c6, something like, uh, I don't know, rook to b1 here. And now we play pawn to b6. Uh, yeah, try and nullify this uh, open b file they've created here. Which is another thing I probably should have said earlier, this uh, taking back the b-pawn to open up this b-file just isn't very good because of this pawn to b6 move. So something like rook to e1 and bishop to b7, and this is just an equal position, if anything it's slightly better for us. So that's if they take us, but they can also try pawn to f4, which is the best move and attempts to retain some advantage by, you know, just if they or if we take, then they will take back, which is exactly what happens here. Take, take, and now we have a super important move here, the only good move, pawn to c5. This pawn break works fantastic with the bishop on g7 preparing to come out, uh, because if they capture, then first of all, we can win the pawns back with immediately with uh, queen to a5. Uh, if they play queen to d4 to protect everything, then uh, knight to c6, and along with bishop to g7, this is a terrible position for them now, despite being up a pawn. So most people here will not take, instead develop normally with knight to f3, at which point we will simply play bishop to g7, bishop to c4, castles castles, and now bishop to g4, and this is just an even position. So that's if they try to take back their b-pawn, which isn't as good. The best move is to take back their d-pawn. If they do this, then now we will play pawn to d6. Attack in their center, which is a move you'll, I think, play from like 99% of times in alkyne positions. At which point they will play knight to f3. Uh, we don't really want to take since we don't want to have to get into this end game here with, uh, you know, trading queens for us uh, when we can't castle. Instead, uh, we will play, or actually real quick, uh, if they take us, then we will just simply take back, and this is just a good position, once again, on g6. But yeah, back in this position, after knight to f3, here we will play knight to c6. Once again, adding more pressure here, at which point they will play bishop to f4. Uh, defending this pawn, they can also try bishop to b5. Uh, this is a pretty good move pinning our knight, but we can actually just ignore it as uh, if they ever take then we can just take back and this b file is pretty good for us. So if they play this then now simply pawn to g6. Uh, if they take us, there's no reason to trade here as now white cannot follow the plan to a uh, long castle here as they would fall directly into our b file. So something like after we take back castles and bishop to g7, this is pretty good for us, about even. So instead of taking, they will likely play castles, at which point after bishop to g7, they will take us, we will take back, and they play rook to e1. Now we will simply castle here, and once again, this is just an even position, so you don't have to be squared, squared, scared of bishop to b5 here paying our knight. Instead, they will likely play bishop to f4, you know, defending the pawn again, at which point we play pawn to g6. I'm sorry if you keep hearing my chair rattle around. Now, something like bishop to b5 here, 
bishop to g7, and now queen to e2. And you see that they are accomplishing that plan of preparing the long castle. So something like castles here for us, and they will castle. And you can see what's going to happen here. Opposite side castling, which means they're going to attack us, and we are going to attack them. This is going to be a very fun position. So something like bishop to g4, uh, pinning them. They will take our knights now, as uh, if they didn't, then we would be able to trade and then take here. So they will trade, at which point this B file is now going to be very, very useful for us. So an example position could look something like pawn to h3 now, and we'll actually back up to e6 and point our bishop at this um, uh, a2 pawn here, or not really the a2 pawn, so they take it and probably trap us, but point is we're pointing it at their uh, castled king, and they're going to start attacking us, and we're going to start attacking them. And yeah, also we're never ever going to push this e-pawn up, so our bishop on d6, or sorry, e6 is perfectly fine here. So something like king to b1 now, try and get more safe, and now queen to d7. And our plan here is pretty simple. We're going to play pawn to c5 to open up our queen to go here. We will move our other rook here. We will push up and up and up to try and soften up their king's Oh, sorry, king side, um, and eventually play probably pawn to c5 or sorry c4 here, and yeah, and during this, during all this happening, <laughs> they're going to start attacking us. So yeah, crazy, crazy position. And however crazy it is, it is still pretty much equal if both sides play very well. Oh my god, you didn't hear the voice crack. But yeah, pretty much equal if both sides play very well. However, most likely whichever side, either us or them, is going to get absolutely destroyed. But yeah, that is the same ish attack with uh, knight c3 here. Now let's look at the Krajic variation. This is after pawn to e4, knight to f6, now bishop to c4. This move has one idea in mind, which is sacrificing the e-pawn, but then to actually win it back with bishop takes on f7 check. Uh, before I look at this, I just want to look at if they don't play bishop takes on f7 check, they might try something like pawn to d3 to try and uh, you know open up their bishop, but if they try any of these moves, which isn't this, it's just very bad since we can retreat with our knight and then play pawn to d5 and pawn to c6, solidifying our center, and they're just down a pawn for zero compensation. They can also try uh, queen to f3 here, fret in a checkmate, but we can simply drop our knight back. They will probably try queen to b3 to try and keep banging on this, but we can destroy it all with pawn to d5. And after they back up their bishop, once again, they have no compensation. This is a horrible position for them. The last thing they can try here is queen to h5. Um, this way. And the only thing to remember here is that, you know, knight to f6 doesn't work now because this is just a checkmate. So instead, we will play here pawn to e6, block out their bishop. So something like pawn to d3 now, and we back up, queen to f3, and once again, pawn to d5. And here we can actually take a ton of center, pawn to c5. But yeah, this is just very, very, very uh, good for us. And once again, they have pretty much zero compensation for the pawn. So yeah, they have to take on f7, which a lot of people won't actually know this move. They don't study this line, but yeah, they have to take on f7, at which point after we take back, now they will play queen to h5 check. And they're always going to end up winning this knight back with the move queen to d5 check a fork. Now the uh, plan I'm going to give you to you uh, here is to play pawn to g6. According to the engine, pawn to uh, or sorry, according to the engine, knight. Oh my god, what am I saying? According to the engine, king of g8 here just uh, is technically the best move, but then our rook never gets out, and it, blah. I don't, I, instead of dealing with all that, I recommend pawn to g6. A very simple idea. After queen to d5 check, we're going to block with e6. 
and then play bishop to g7. We're going to then play rook to f8 or rook to e8 and run our king back and essentially self castle. So something here like knight to f3, rook to f8, pawn to d4, and here we can actually play this move pawn to d5, striking the queen in the center. Uh, it's the only can move here, but you may be thinking, well, isn't the e pawn being a backward pawn now really, really bad? The answer is no, as we will strike back in the center with pawn to c5, and a white will never in a million years end up winning this pawn. So an example of position could look something like queen to e2 back, so now a king to g8, and the most popular move here is bishop to g5. Attacking our queen, but it's actually just not very good. The reason it's not very good is just simply queen to d6, uh, defending everything, and this bishop doesn't really make that much sense here. So something like castles, and now pawn to c5, which is a very important pawn break in this position. So something like pawn to c3 and knight to c6, and we've achieved a comfortable, com comfortable position. Our other bishop will pop out to d7, and this is pretty much equal, if anything, better for us. There is one thing that they can try here, which is um, knight to g5, trying to win the pawn the back, but this failed to tactical defense with knight to c6. Uh, also, apologies if my voice isn't as good as it was an hour ago. Uh, I did not plan for this video to be anywhere near this long, and yeah, talking a lot is starting to take a toll on me. So, now knight takes on e6, just completely fails, because we can actually just take back, and after they take us, and we run our king to the side, they have a problem. We are attacking both of this, and we are going to play rook to e8, and pin their queen to their king. So, almost always here, they will try to play castles, but this simply fails to knight takes on d4. Uh, yeah, they play castles to get out of this uh, pin here, but yeah, knight takes on d4 just completely loses for them because they cannot defend c2 and also winning their rook in the corner as well as their queen. So they have to move their queen back, something like a queen to g4 probably, and now simply knight takes on c2 and we will take the rook in the corner and yeah, we're just up an entire rook here and a pawn. We're probably even going to get our uh, knight out as well, which would be great for us. Yeah, this is completely lost, so knight to g5 trying to win our pawn just does not work at all. But yeah, that is the Krajic variation. Now let's look at a simpler one. Pawn the d3. This is known as the... Oh, sorry, pawn the d3 here is known as the Moroxy variation. This move is passive because it blocks out the light square bishop, but once again, it's very solid. The position, or the setup I recommend against this, is to play pawn to d6, and kind of a king's indian setup, or, or if you don't know the king's indian, then the al kind of setup that you've been playing before. So something like uh, pawn to g6 now, bishop to g7, and castles. And you can see their bishop is going to lead a very sad life on this square. And one of the important moves to remember here is to play pawn to c5. Just making sure they're, if they ever do play this pawn to d4 uh, push that we can take it. Now play knight to c6. And I mean, yeah, just not too much to say here. This is just a decent position and it's about equal, if anything, slightly better for us. But yeah, not too much to say for this um, Moroxy variation. Now let's look at a <laughs> much more complicated one, I'll probably be on this one for a while. The Lasker attack. This is pawn e4, knight to f6, and we get the two pawns um, attack, but instead of playing pawn to d4 here and going to the main line, pawn to c5. This move immediately attacks our knight and is very dangerous for both sides. White here, if they know what they're doing, is going to end up sacrificing the C pawn for a lot of development, and but uh, her but White here also has to be careful since uh, we're going to get our knight in the D5, and because their pawns are so overextended, they can never kick us out. So after we move our knight back to D5, the most common move for them is to play Bishop to C4, 
attacking our knight. However, I was also, uh, oh my god, it's, I can barely even talk. I will also look at a few other sidelines. So, something like knight to c3 is a less common option, but still very, very good for them. If they play this, then we will play pawn to e6. And now that I think about it, it actually makes more sense to just look at the main line first, so I'm going to do that instead. So, remove that I ever played uh, knight c3 in the back of your brain. So after knight to d5 and bishop to c4 attacking our knight, we are actually just going to defend it with pawn to e6. This move might look weird. Aren't the doubled pawns they trade bad for us? The answer is no, because now we open up our bishop here, and we're going to play pawn to d6, smashing the center open, and they're never ever going to be able to capitalize on us having two d pawns. Yeah, so if they take, you'll take back. We're attacking c5, so they're going to defend it with pawn to d4, at which point we smash the center open with pawn to d6. Just, you know, attacking everybody. Oh my god, attacking everybody. Oh my, I can barely even run arrows. Attack everybody. So, something like takes takes. Now, knight to f3 to defend everything here. Knight to c6. And this move in normally would be bad. But they have no light square bishop to uh, pin us because they traded it off. So, there's uh, no way to punish us. Oh my god, it's <laughs> starting to get hard to talk. I'm like, how long have we been doing this for? An hour and 12... This is going to be my longest video by far. So, knight to c6. Now they will castle here. We will take. They will take back. And now, bishop to e7. And this is just a good position. Um, yeah, we are very safe here. Something like knight to c3, bishop e6, bishop f4, and castles. And this is just a good position. And black uh, does exceptionally well here. It's, despite being an even position, black scores extremely well here. Uh, but yeah, that's if they end up trading. And now real quick before I get into the other lines, I will look at the other moves that they can play here. So, instead of bishop c4, they can also try knight c3. But if they do this, then we have the exact same idea, pawn to e6. So, they will take us. We will take back after pawn to d4, once again, pawn to d6, smashing open the center. So something like takes takes, knight to f3, knight to c6, and now bishop to d3. And the move bishop to uh, b5 here, which I think a few thousand people have played, actually just completely loses to queen to a5 check. Yeah, or sorry, you know, just completely win their bishop, so yeah, that means loses a piece for them. So uh, after knight c6, they'll develop with bishop to d3, we'll take, they'll take, and once again, bishop to e7, bishop d6, sorry, bishop e7, bishop d6, and castles, and we get those, those, uh, all those same ideas. Uh, another thing they can try here is to play, uh, wait, where is it, pawn to d4? Oh yeah, in this position, after uh, pawn to e6, they can also try pawn to d4, but once again, pawn to d6, this move occurs in almost every variation. So once again, takes takes, knight to f3, knight takes, or yeah, in this position, you actually want to take their knight, because after this happens, now we have this move, queen to c7. Once again, we're getting this, and also we're attacking this pawn, so you have to defend it. Knight to c6, they will take, we'll take back, and we'll pop the bishop out here, castle, very good position. About even, corner of the engine, plus 0 0.5. Will that uh, plus 0 0.5 ever matter in a million years? No. The answer is no. So, back here. Instead of uh, knight to c3, they can also try pawn to d4. This is decent, but doesn't challenge our golden knight in the center, which white must do soon with either bishop c4 or knight to c3. So, once again, pawn to d6, our plan doesn't change. Takes, takes, knight to f3, knight to c6. And now bishop to c4. If they play this, then we will take them. Or yeah, we will take their pawn. That's now our queen of season knights in defense. And after they take back, we have an important move here: knight to b4. This strange-looking move is very good, as now the c2 fork is a real possibility of something like trading and yeah, real possibility. Uh, the move knight to b6 is still good, but the other move scores even better, so, you know, why play a mediocre move when you can play a better move? So if they play this, then something like 
or if we play knight to b6 and something like trade queens, bishop back to b3, and now bishop g4, and yeah, we're, we're fine here, I guess. But knight to b4 does very, very well. So, in this position, they almost always trade queens. We will take it, and now they play knight to a3 to defend this c2 fork, and now we play bishop to e6. Uh, if they take us, then we will simply take back our knight. But also, uh, if we take them, or actually, wait, never mind, actually. After castles, now we simply play pawn to g6. And this doesn't work because after now here, there is no king to fork because the rook has the b1 square. So yeah, so after castles, now we play bishop to g6, or pawn to g6. Uh, and we bring our knight back once it's defended, or sorry, once it's attacked. Bishop c3, bishop g7, rook to d1, and castles. And yeah, this is just a dead even position. Not much to uh, say here, or yeah, do here. Yeah, just not much. So they pretty much have to play bishop to c4, or transpose into this main line that we're about to get to. And after pawn to e6, the main move is knight to c3. This is known as the Lasker Simul Gambit, and what they're doing is gambiting this uh, c pawn. Now, I am going to recommend to not get into any of this. Since I've looked at this line, taking this pawn pretty much always leads to failure. So instead, uh, oh, real quick. Oh, yeah, sorry. Instead, I'm going to recommend taking, but then instead of taking the pawn, simply knight to c6. And we might end up taking this pawn, but not at this second. Instead, something like bishop to f4 to defend this from our knight. And now we have a very important move here, queen to h4. This is an even position, but black wins 60% of games here, compared to white's measly 33%, which is a massive difference. What this move does is skewers their two bishops, uh, and they have to defend this one, so they will almost always play pawn to g3, defending it, and attacking our queen, at which point we simply drop our queen back to e7. Because we are attacking this uh, pawn here, white will, 9 times out of 10, play pawn to b4 to defend it, but this is actually just a mistake because of a very nice move, pawn to g5, attacking their bishop, defended by the queen, and white here is now regretting this pawn to g3 move since they cannot back their bishop up to defend this pawn. And after they move their bishop back, now we are going to be able to take this e-pawn, and this e-pawn is much better than the c-pawn. Something like bishop to e3, now we will take on e5, attack their bishop, and they will play bishop to d4, uh, pinning our knight, and we undo the pin and defend it with bishop to g7. Uh, now, taking the bishop and actually losing this one is actually pretty good for us, so white here will probably stop it by backing up their bishop to b3, at which point we simply play pawn to b6. We are going to be able to go for a double Fianchetto setup and also attack the rook in the corner, which is always a nice bonus. Um, when push comes to shove, trading this knight for another piece and sacrificing this bishop is always good. And yeah, this is just a great position. We've gone past all the gambitry that white usually plays into a position we were still upon, but it is very bad for them. Uh, if this knight ever needs defending, we can also play pawn to d6, and we can just enjoy the pawn advantage and the better position here. Yeah, so that is the Lasker attack and the Lasker simul gambit. Now let's look at the Ballo variation, or I think that's how it's pronounced. Yeah, the Ballo variation. So this comes after pawn to e4, knight to f6, pawn to e5, knight to d5, pawn to d4, pawn to d6, and now bishop to c4. This variation isn't great for them, but it is very dangerous if we misplay it. It blocks out the c4 pawn push, which is very good for white, something they will almost always play. Uh, we can simply back up to b6 for our knight, and white will try to play queen to h4 and queen to f3 to friend some stuff on here, but we can easily stop this with pawn to e6. So something like knight back to b6, 
bishop to b3, we take them, and now they play this move, queen to h5 check. Threatening some nasty stuff here, as well as attacking our pawn, but it is perfectly fine for us. Here, we play the move, pawn to e6, they will take it, and now we play pawn to a5. This is the only move that scores very, very well for us, and we're going to force them to either play pawn to a3 or pawn to a4 and make them provoke weaknesses. And almost always, they will play pawn to a4, but that's actually just not a good move. The reason it's not a good move is that now we simply develop with knight to d7, and we're going to plant our knight on c5, which is another idea in these alakine positions. Another thing they can try here, instead of pawn to a4, is pawn to c3, but here we actually have a very nice move, which probably looks very strange, queen to d3. This move looks very odd, why are we moving our queen out? But it has a very simple idea. We are preventing their bishop from coming to this comfortable c2 square, and they have no way of kicking our queen out. Just no way. So, they will probably develop normally with knight to f3, and they also cannot castle because of our queen. Our queen is in a very powerful position here. So now something like pawn to a4, their bishop's only square is back to d1, at which point now knight to c6. They will likely play bishop to e2, to try and kick our queen, but now we drop our queen all the way in. Queen to c2. <laughs> queen to c2. <sighs> we drop our queen all the way in. This is infiltration on its best scale. We plant our queen on c2, and we also attack this dark squared bishop, which is a blind spot for a lot of people. So yeah, if they play bishop d1 trying to repeat, then we can just take their bishop. But yeah, their castling is now prevented also because then we would take their bishop, and yeah, this is just very, 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 very good for us. The other thing they can try here is the move pawn to a3. I'm sorry, back in this position, pawn to a3, but now we play knight to c6, knight to f3, and now pawn to a4. Their bishop's only square is back to a2, and now we play knight to d4. Launching our knight into the center, and as well as uh, attacking this uh, c2 pawn. So they pretty much have to take us because everything else just loses. So we'll take back. And after they will castle, we have a very nice move here, which actually wins this pawn. Rook to a5! A brilliant rook lift, which really makes this pawn push all the way up worth it. And the e5 pawn is just lost because after they defend it with uh, rook to e1, by the way, they can't play pawn to f4 because this pawn is pinned after rook to e1, now simply bishop to d6. Yeah, I mean, they cannot take it because then we would take their queen, and yeah, we just end up winning their pawn in the center with a very nice position. So, let me go back here. So after pawn to e4, now we will simply develop with knight to d7. Once again, this idea of going to c5. They will play knight to f3, at uh, which point we move our knight to c5. They will likely castle here. Uh, if they back their bishop up to a2, then that's just not very good, since bishop to d7 uh, to target this pawn. And something like knight to c3, and we can just win it. If they play a pawn to b3 here, then simply bishop to a c6, and now our bishop is just a monster in this diagonal, and this bishop is... Horrible. I mean, this, this bishop's having a terrible day. Yes, yeah, so they will likely just castle here, accepting this bad pawn structure. Uh, but you know, it's it's still not horrible for them. But once again, here we have this move, queen to d3. This move probably looks worse now since can't they go knight c6 and kick us out with rook to uh, d1? Yes, but our idea is to rotate it to g6 and trade off these queens. So something like knight to c3 here, bishop to d7, and only once we are provoked, now we move our queen back to g6. Uh, if they take, then we can simply take back and we get this nice open file here, and instead of castling, we have a plan of playing 
uh, our bishop out, and then going king up to e7, which is just, you know, it's pretty good for us, pretty good for us. Yes, something like queen to h3, because they'll most likely deny the queen trade. Now simply bishop to c5, prevent their bishop from coming out to d6, or I'm sorry, d3, or I'm sorry, e3, oh my god. So simply bishop d2 and castles. We have gone through the opening stage and received a slightly better but about equal position. So that is the Balo variation, bishop to c4. Now here I am going to look at the Cambridge Gambit. This is an interesting gambit, I only remind you of it, so it's in the four pawns attack, and here we play the move pawn to g5. This is an interesting gambit. While bad objectively, it seems to be a one just uh, just a one-trick pony, but nonetheless, it scores very well with black, winning 50% of games compared to 45%. And if white captures, then all their advantage is gone. So their best move is to play knight c3, just develop. But if they end up taking, then yeah, all their advantage is gone. This is just a blunder, because after takes, they will take back. Now you can trade queens and simply play bishop to e6. Something like pawn to b3 now, and yes, we are still down a pawn, however, this is completely winning for us because their king is just bad here, and they have a, a quite literally zero development. So now something like bishop to g7 to attack this, and also see this rook in the corner, knight to f3, knight to c6, and we're going to just end up probably winning this. Uh, so something like bishop to f4, try to protect, triple castle, knight to c2, and now knight to d7. We're going to end up winning this pawn back as they simply cannot defend it again. We have superior development, and this is just a much better position overall. So this is a job well done for the gambit. Uh, yes, back here. They can also try to play uh, pawn the d5, uh, which is the best move technically, but almost nobody actually plays this, and this is still not very good for them. So yeah, back here. Instead of taking it, they'll most likely play knight c3, the best move. However, they can also try to play knight to f3. Or, did I say knight to f3? Knight to c3 is the best move. And this is the most popular move, but it's actually not that good, since we can kick away the knight with pawn to g4, and this is not really how white wants to play here, since now something like um, knight to g5, we will take it, they will take back, knight to c6, Bishop to e3, and now bishop to f5, and we are not down a pawn here, um, and we have enough development to make this g4 and g5 pawn push worth it in the end, and black scores very, very well here. So, that's they play knight to f3, but their best move, knight to c3, just ignoring it. This is where the gambit starts to get a little iffy, and why I do not really recommend it. So something like bishop to g7 here, and if white can find this move, queen to h5, this is horrible for us. This is a challenging move to find, but if they do end up playing this, a loss is to be expected. White wins 70% of games here, compared to 26 for us, which is horrible. This is why I don't recommend this, and rather the main line. Uh, and also, once again, if they play knight to f3, then pawn to g4, and... Yeah, this isn't that good, but queen to h5 here, yeah, it's just very, very bad for us, since after we take, we take, I mean, this this position just is not very good. We're down in development, this bishop is kind of weak here, their queen is uh, pretty good here, actually, we might run into rook to d1, yeah, I, I can't really recommend the gambit because of all of this. Next up, we have the Spielman Gambit, which is in the Scandinavian variation, pawn to e5, and now pawn to e6. This is a very strong gambit for white. Despite gambiting a pawn, it is an equal position as our pawn structure becomes very weak. To counter it, we will play g6, bishop to g7, and strike back with pawn to c5, and if they ever capture the pawn, then we are not going to take back. So, something like, we will take back, 
they will play pawn to d4, striking in the center, and we play pawn to c5. This is the important move. If they capture, then we will actually just not capture back. Instead, we will play knight to c6, g6, to play bishop to g7. White's best plan here is to play pawn to h4 and push to h5 to weaken this g6 pawn. So now something like knight takes on c5, uh, it is safe to take this now as our bishop covers any shenanigans on this diagonal. So we will capture and we can just take back, they will take our rook, we will take back, bishop to d3 to attack this pawn, at which point we will take it with our knight, with check, they will take back their queen, and the vital move here, king to d7. And what we're going to do in this position is run our king to c7 and then just develop and act like our king is self-castled essentially. So something like queen takes on g6, takes takes, and uh, yeah, the engine recommends queen to h8 now. We'll then run our king over to the side, bishop out. It's a difficult thing to actually play and practice, however, this is the best way of playing and black does pretty well here. So that's if they take on c5, however the better thing for them to do here is to not take the pawn and instead develop normally with knight to f3. Here we will play knight to c6 once again, and now the most popular move here is bishop to b5, which is actually just a mistake, since now after pawn to g6, pawn to h4, pawn, and here they will actually trade, I yeah, kind of skipped ahead a little bit. My brain's frying because this video is an hour and 30 minutes long, oh my god. Yeah, the reason they trade here is that if they played pawn to h5 immediately, then we could just take on here. Uh, and then, yeah, defended with the bishop, and this is pretty bad for them. So they're going to trade here, but this is actually just a mistake. Since after pawn to h5, now we can just take in the center here, they will take back. And they are attacking both of these pawns, however we can actually defend them both with knight to e5. Defending this pawn like this, and now the bishop opens to see this. So now something like takes takes, rook takes on h8, bishop takes, and after bishop to f4 and queen to b6, we are just better in this position. Uh, yeah, we're just up a pawn, and the white doesn't have a ton to show for this. And truth be told, this is, like, I, I had to spend a lot of time to actually come up with this line, since this is one of the most, or one of the most challenging things that white can play against us, but I believe with this setup I just showed you, you can get a good position against it pretty much every single time. So now we're going to move on to the trash and unknown sidelines. These are things you're almost never going to face. So first off, we have the Lemberger Gambit. Comes after e4, knight to f6, and knight to f3. And I have my notes here. I wrote down, this gambit belongs in a trash can. There's basically no compensation or even reason to gambit the pawn. We can play g6 after we take it, and we can basically play with the same setup too. Trash. Yeah, the reason it's so bad is that we can take it, and I'll play pawn to g6, and we have the same Fianchetto setup that we have in all the other um, variations as well. Something like pawn to c4, bishop to g7, uh, they'll play bishop to d3 to attack our knight, we can back up, castles castles, rook to e1, and pawn to d6. Hello, compensation, where are you buddy? Yeah, there's, there's just no compensation here, there's really... Yeah, there's just no compensation, there's no reason for them to gambit to the pawn, and they're just down a pawn with pretty much nothing to show for it. They can also try the Omega Gambit, which is basically the same thing. Because after knight to f6, now they play pawn to d4. And after we take it, bishop d3, knight to f6, and this is the exact same gambit. Most likely they'll play pawn to c4, castle, and will transpose into the exact same line. And I will say the, uh, God given, or I don't know, however you want to say it. The main way of breaching this gambit is knight to f6 here, the Indian game, and now pawn to e4. And this is another way of reaching it, I guess. And yeah, room minutes here. You can refer to the Lemberger gambit on this one, because yeah, they're basically the same position. 
They're about the same quality, and they'll almost transpose into each other. If this opening was on Rotten Tomatoes, I would give it a 15%. Or in other words, trash! It's, yes, yeah, bad. It's horrible, don't play it. And the last uh, trash gambit is the Achilles Omega gambit, which is pawn to e4, knight to f6, and now pawn to c4. Yeah, it's just it's just bad. Yeah, look at the Lemberger gambit for this one. It's the same level of quality, and they will almost transpose into each other. Certified garbage. And yeah, I guess the other way of reaching it is pawn to c4. This is the I think it's the Anglo-Indian defense, the English opening, and now pawn to e4. Yeah, just look at the Lemberger gambit if you do ever somehow face this, but yeah, it's just very, very bad. Now, this is the last real variation I have for you. It is known as the Hunt variation. I think I skipped ahead a little bit. Ignore that, I didn't see that. The hunt variation. It comes after pawn to e4, knight to f6, pawn to e5, and it comes in the two pawns attack, or sorry, actually not two pawns attack, the main line here, in the move pawn to c5. Yeah, I gave it a blunder because it goes from plus 0.6 to minus 1.4, a massive, massive loss of, you know, evaluation. You may get this with a particularly bloodthirsty opponent who wants nothing but the raw feeling of attacking your knight as much as possible. Luckily, it is absolutely terrible and even worse than those weird gambits I just showed you. So now something like, um, we will take them and they will take back. Technically, knight to f3 is the best, but literally zero people in the history of the universe have ever played this, and it's still complete garbage since after we take and they take back, yeah, white has zero compensation over the pawn, negative compensation even. Yeah, so after they take back, which is the most common move but a mistake, we will trade queens, and now we simply plop our knight on the d5. And these pawns are just way overextended, and nothing can really compare to our knight in the center. They have to trade it off with either bishop c4 or knight to c3. They'll most likely play knight c3, will defend it with pawn to e6, takes takes, and after bishop to e3 to defend this pawn, now we can actually just win a pawn with knight to d7. This is a fork of both the overextended pawns here. And yeah, it's just a complete garbage opening. What a joke, what a joke. So something like rook to c1 to defend this, but now simply knight takes on e5. We're up upon white has no compensation, and this is horrible. Now, last two um, things. The Welling variation. This comes after pawn to e4, knight to f6, pawn to e5, knight to d5, and pawn to b3. This is basically unknown. I don't know why it's even named, but it is. You can basically play the same setup you usually do, just long castle. The bishop on b2 to support the e pawn is just not very good and just wastes a lot of precious development time. So something like pawn to d6, we will take it. And if they take back, now knight to c6, we're developing with tempo. They will bring their bishop uh, to pin us. We can simply stop the pin with bishop to d7. They will move their bishop back, pawn to a6, bishop c4, and now bishop to f5 to defend the knight like this, and after knight to f3 and pawn to e6, we simply have superior development here, and we're just better. The best way to play this is to develop our bishop, move our queen out, and then long castle. However, if I'm completely honest, it really doesn't matter. And the last variation I have for you today is the Steiner, or Steiner, Steiner variation which is very similar to the Welling variation, except instead of pawn to uh, b3 in this position, it is pawn to b3 in this position. And once again, the bishop on b2 is just unnecessary here. So something like pawn to d6, takes, takes, and yeah, so you can actually take the queen here because nothing can really contest. Something like bishop to b2, pawn to e5 to prevent a pawn to d4 push and make this bishop useless. Knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop b2, bishop f5, castles, and now we triple castle. And now we have ideas of pawn to f6, uh, moving our bishop out. Yeah. It's just not too good for them. But uh, that is all I really have for you today. How long is this video? Oh god, an hour and 40 minutes? <sighs> okay.
Okay, well that is the complete masterclass guide to the Alakine Defense. You can probably tell by how long this video is that this took a ton of time to create. So if you want to support me, just leave a like, subscribe, do all that stuff, and I will see you next time. Have a fantastic day.